Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. Today we're going to talk about the difference between joint compound, also known as drywall mud, and spackle, also known as drywall mud, but that's kind of a different topic. We'll also cover what the different uses are and what my preferred uses for both things are. Okay, drywall mud, which I have on here, is obviously going to be used for, well, finishing drywall, so taping and coating drywall. There's not a lot of mystery there. There's a few different types generally. You know, we have taping muds, we have all-purpose muds, we have all-purpose light, we have light mud. Okay, there's a lot of different types. I have a video on that. Uh, we're not gonna get into that. Today, we just have your all-purpose light. That's the one I use most commonly. So personally, I often do use drywall mud where people would use spackle, which is like to finish little dents in the walls. So you're doing like little bits of filling. Now, the reason I like to use it is because it's easier to sand and I always have it on hand. And usually what I will do is I will use it straight from the box or bucket before adding any water. So it's a little bit thicker, but it does have some drawbacks. Let's get some close-ups on this wall and I'm gonna show you guys how I like to use it and what the drawbacks are to using drywall mud as spackle. So spackle is the generally preferred product to finish little bits like this. And if I was using drywall mud, I would use bigger knives and I would skim the whole area and I would have to do it twice to fill these little things. Now I'm gonna show you guys why, because drywall mud generally is not very dense and it usually has a lot of moisture added to it. So I don't know how we're gonna quantify this, but it's like the amount of particles versus the water volume tends to be really low in drywall mud. So let's see what happens when I try filling some of these little nicks and dings. So when I'm using my regular consistency drywall mud and you fill that, you can see it pulls it right out of there. Try filling this one, it pulls it right out again. So it left a whole spot right there that's not full. This is totally hollow, so that's not gonna work at all. So when using drywall mud, you have to actually build it up a tiny bit like that if you actually wanna fill these little things. So that might seem totally crazy to you, but that's actually how I do it when I don't have spackle on hand and I'm using regular drywall mud. And I did mention that that is actually also my preference. I do it all the time. The reason is it's really easy to sand. So when I come back over the wall with a pole sander, everything winds up really flat. It sands super easy and I don't get left with hard edges. So it's actually a really good method, even though it seems crazy to be adding that much material to the wall. But what it does is that it makes sure it's not pulling it out of the hole and it also accounts for some shrinkage. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so what we can gather from this about joint compound is that it's intended to be spread bigger, right? It's got a lot of water in it and it has a lot less whatever the um, sediment or particulates or what's the word I'm looking for? You know, all the little micro filler stuff that's in it. It's got a lot of that. So let's get to spackle. Okay, the first thing you're gonna notice about a tub, other than the pink stuff, this is the dry time indicator stuff, I love that actually. But the first thing you're gonna notice is that it's way denser, and it's actually a fair bit stickier in a way. Like it just feels dense and gooey and sticky. The other thing you're gonna notice is that when you push your knife across it, um, there's not so much porosity. So you can see it just looks like a solid surface after you run your knife across it. I should have showed you the drywall mud, but basically the drywall mud has tons of air and porosity in it. But when you wipe this nice and thin, it looks pretty nice and solid. Okay, now let's try filling this stuff with the spackle. So let's first just try and wipe it tight like we did with the other stuff. So most of it's full. There's a little hole right there, but that's not actually that bad. You can just go over it again, and that's pretty full now. So that's because it's denser, it has less water, and it's a little bit gluier. There's just a lot more filler in this stuff. It's not so wet and movable. Now, sometimes you do kind of still need to build it up a bit if you don't want it to shrink. Like, that is going to shrink, and you'll probably see it if you have a lot of glancing light. So you might still actually need to leave a little buildup like that. Okay, before we go, let's look at how to wipe this stuff out. So basically, when you're putting it on the wall like that, 
instead of pressing so hard that you pull it all off, you have to press really flat. So there's not an angle like you do sometimes with a drywall knife, really flat. And then that way it leaves just enough on that it's got a nice fill, but there's enough there to shrink. So when you sand it, well, it sands nice and flat instead of having a hollow spot. But generally, the spackle is designed to fill little things like this, whereas the drywall mud is designed to do big stuff. So if you've been wondering what the difference between spackle and drywall mud is, I hope this helps. So spackle is designed to fill small things, small repairs. It dries faster, it's a little bit harder to sand, even though this stuff isn't particularly hard to sand. The dry decks, it's a really good option for fixing walls. I don't usually use it for fixing trim, but I love using this stuff for, you know, like say, I'm, say I've got a coat of paint on the wall, like a coat of primer, and now I can see all the deficiencies. That's the point that I'm gonna start breaking out this stuff. So when I have maybe like five or 10 little things to fix before getting the finished coats of paint on a wall. So we also need to cover some different types of spackle, right? The other one that I use sometimes is, I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden, Dyna Patch. So that stuff is, has the same properties that it's pretty dry. So one of the other things, this stuff likes to dry out on your knife a lot faster than drywall mud, but yeah, both Dyna Patch and this stuff, the dry decks are pretty dry. They get a little crumbly as the ball keeps getting a little smaller. The moisture gets pulled off from the wall a lot. So um, it takes a lot more effort to keep it cleaner, I find, than drywall mud. But the use that I have for Dyna Patch is for filling trim. I don't like this stuff, the dry decks for filling trim because it's not hard enough. This stuff is way too close to drywall mud and I'm not gonna fill my trim with drywall mud. So I use something that's a lot harder and closer to wood filler. And I, I don't know if wood filler is considered a spackle or not, um, but yeah, that's the difference between spackle and drywall mud. Anyways, you guys, I think this video is done now. I'm pretty sure you understand the difference between the two and I hope you're doing awesome. I hope your project's going awesome and thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Till the next one, you guys.